Hey guys, up guys, back with video. Today we are going to be rating the rides on Knott's Berry Farm. Well, mostly the coasters. It's not going to be any of the actual flat rides. But, um, I was able to have a trip the yesterday, um, to Knott's. And hopefully you guys enjoy this. Um, this is my hometown park. And I want to give it a little bit of love, um, considering the other people who are making top videos. They are a bunch of outsiders and not really know... Um, a lot like going to the, they don't go to the park a lot and they maybe only had like one chance to ride the ride The first coaster on our list is um, Timberline Twister, a Bradley and Kane coaster um, It opened in 1983 and has a max height of 30 feet and a max speed of 29 feet this is a really good coaster for the young kids, um, to toddlers and all that that want to get on a roller coaster but just can't get on the big ones, like Jaguar that's going to be showing up on the later on our list. But um, I really liked this coaster, but it's whenever I was able to ride it, it was never open. But that's why it's all the way at the bottom, because also it's not really a really intense ride. Next coaster that we have on our list is Coast Rider. It's a mock ride, um, mi Wild Mouse, um, that opened up in 2013. And it has a max speed of 52 feet and goes up to 23 miles per hour. I used to love this ride as a kid, but now I went rewrote it. It took 30 minutes to go through the line for some reason, even though it's never busy for this ride. And it just sucked. Like, I remember it being faster than it was, and also, um, I, I'm a really tall person, um, I'm about six foot, so my, and my, sh my hip was hurting like hell on this ride, cause, like, they have the cert, the restraints are really bad, cause they don't just have a lap bar, there's also a knee bar to keep the knee from, um, going like up and brick going up and down and it whenever you move your my leg whenever i moved my leg a little bit my hip just hurt really bad and but this is definitely a family oriented coaster if you're a little kid watching this um go on it it's really fun it's just not um very fun for the older adults and also could be quite painful for um older riders. Um, the next coaster that we have on our list is Pony Express. It was manufactured by um, Zamperla. Um, I probably butchered that. Um, it opened in 2008 it ha and it has a max um, height of four 44 feet and a max speed of 38 feet. As you guys can see on the screen right now, um, there's a little bit something wrong with this coaster and is that it takes a while for it to launch if there's a train going through it. But that's not a really good, one of the reasons why it's down here. Well, the main reason why it's down at this list is because the even though it's a really cool design of the trains, um, it can be quite painful. Um, and it could make could cause a little bit of soreness, but besides that it's actually a pretty good launch coaster It's just the line is normally really long as you guys can see on the screen right when it passed and It's literally only like 44 seconds or 40 seconds. It's not a long ride. It's not really worth the wait, but um, Make sure to get on this ride if there's not a long line um, to get onto it. Our next um, ride is at the front of the park, um, right next to Camp, in Camp Snoopy Land. It is um, Sierra Sidewinder, a mock rides um, spinning coaster, created in 2007. It has a max height of um, 62 feet and a max speed of 37 um, miles per hour. Um, this ride is really good, and if you can get onto it, get onto it. Um, the only cr really big criticism criticism about this ride is it's unpredictable, which is pretty good about the, um, it's supposed to be part of the spinning coasters, but it's rough. 
I've seen videos of people saying, oh, this coaster is pretty rough, and I always thought they were, like, crazy. But then when I came onto it um, again, I sort of paid attention to that detail, and I could feel that it was a little bit rough on the train. And I kept on, like, sort of moving in my seat, even though I really shouldn't have. But if you can get on this coaster, do it. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. Our next coaster is much as it was a short shot on launching coasters. I actually don't know what the actual model is. It was opened in 1978 and has a, a height of uh, 148 feet and a max speed of 55 miles per hour. This ride is really good. It sort of hurts that I put it right here because I am a history nerd geek and I love um, this ride actually is the only um, living one of its type in the United States. But um, it's just really hard to rank it other, among the other coasters. Our next coaster on our list is Jaguar. I mentioned it earlier in the video um, during the Coast Rider. Um, this ride is was created by Zyre in 1995. It has a max feet height of, na is of 65 feet and has a max speed of 35 miles per hour. The reason why I rank this coaster very high, even though it is a family-oriented coaster, is because A, it's the best family-oriented coaster in the park, and honestly, if I'm honest, it's the best one I've ever been to, but that's not really saying anything considering I've been to only five theme parks. Um, this one, Disney, Universal, Magic um, Mountain, and Tivoli Gardens in Denmark. That's all I've been to. So, but this ride is really good because at the start, you go through the loop of Montezuma's Revenge. And on Montezuma's Revenge, yeah, that is a feature, but you don't really see it. You, while going to Jaguar, and if there's a launch that goes around, you see it, and it um, possibly goes around you. I've never been on, I think I've actually been on it once when it's done that. But another reason why I rank it this high is because all of the other um, family coasters suck, honestly, except um, Sierra Sidewinder and um, Pony Express. But um, this one is also really good because um, the cars and theming of this ride is just awesome. It's inside like the Aztec te Temple and the cars really fit the theme while other um, family coasters may have a theme just not as good um but if you're going to the park this one's always a short line and you should always get on it because it's also self-choosing of the spots uh, our next ride on this list um, which places at number four is um silver bullet it's the gatekeeper of the park um it's a b and um invert it opened in 2004 and it has a max um, height of 146 feet and the max speed is 55 miles per hour um, this ride is really good it gives it makes whenever i go on it um it gives a great view of the um, area before um you go down um when i went on this um on the week this week um, I went on it right before sunset, and it it was just beautiful. And then um, the entrance just looks really nice from that um, from the viper roll or whatever they call them. I really don't know exactly. Um, but what the only criticism I had about have the, about this ride is that um, whenever I go on it, my feet seem to always hurt. A little bit like it they feel like they're gonna like be like tensing up a little bit but that can be something with all inverted coasters and I just don't know because this is the only one I've been on or um, I also um, have seen that this people think this coaster can be a tiny bit rough which it can be in I've had um, people complain that their heads have been were banging uh, between the sides of the coaster but um, this one's a really good one Our third ride on our list is um, Hang Time. It opened in 2018, making it the newest.
first ride on our list. It was produced by Gerstner, um, and it has a max height of 150 feet and a max speed of 570 feet. This ride is really damn good. It's a quick ride, but really good. This stop right that we're seeing right now really makes the ride more intense. And considering that this is the only dive coaster in the state of California, it makes it ten, ten times better and it really brings up guest across very well, which is a really good idea. Considering this is actually the part that gives the most profits to the company. And what's really good about this ride is that it doesn't just focus on paint time, it also focuses on air time and has a lot of non-inverted sections and also inverted sections. Make sure you get on this ride. Cool. Unfortunately, when I went, it was closed for um, some reason, <laughs> but next time I'm going 100% getting on this. My second to last um, ride on this list is Accelerator. Um, it was manufactured by Intamin in 2002 and opened uh, and has a max height of 203 feet and goes 82 miles per hour. Um, this ride is very famous because this ride is the prototype of the Intamin, um, the Intamin Accelerator model. And this ride here led to the creation of King Dakka and um, Top Thrill Dragster. Um, this is a really fun ride, and last time I went to Knott's, I, this was, it was actually my first time, and I was always scared to go on it, but once you got on, like, when you're waiting for the ride, it looks like the cart is just a flash of light, but when you're actually on the ride, it's not as fast as you um, think. You don't have time to get butterflies in your stomach. Please go on it. The final coaster on my list is Ghost Rider. This ride is the best one in the park, as I show on the list. Um, it was originally um, constructed by Custom Coasters International, but in 2018, um, it got retracked by Great Coasters International. Um, little piece of history about this coaster, um, when they were gonna retract it, they were either debating between Great Coasters International and an RMC, but they decided to go with Great Coasters International because they wanted to keep the um, family-friendly um, feel, feel of the coaster, even though it's mostly for adults. Um, the coaster originally opened in um, 1998 and had a max um, height of eight, 118 feet and um, goes up to 56 miles per hour. This ride is really fun as you get excellent hang time and air time, not hang time. Um, then there's the really good turns and you get the wind in your face no matter where you're sitting in the um, carts. Plus also, um, what's really good about this ride is that the photo opportunity because it's like right after the main drop, like most coasters except this one, you don't even see the um, camera and it just, it doesn't feel like they're, you're taking a photo. It's more like it's just a flash of light. And also, this is a really good element of the coaster right on this our screen because on the station, you can hear it moving because it's right above the, um, the building. And this coaster is really fun and I've been on it multiple times in the past couple years and it's definitely a coaster on uh, my wish list that will always stay at the park and you guys always have to ride it but this is coming to the end of the video hopefully you enjoy um the next couple videos and i'll see you guys in the next video Good. bye